of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with all of you. And with your spirit. And so this second Sunday of Advent, we meet that wonderful fiery figure, John the Baptist, who calls us to a deeper relationship with Jesus by recognizing what we need to change in ourselves. So as we enter into this celebration, we take a moment and we do what John the Baptist asked us to do, to repent from our sins, and so let us take a moment examining our hearts and asking God to heal them. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to life everlasting. Amen. And now let us pray. Almighty and merciful God, May no earthly undertaking hinder those who set out in haste to meet your Son. But may our learning of heavenly wisdom gain us admittance to his company, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. Amen. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. Comfort. Give comfort to my people, says your God. Speak tenderly to Jerusalem and proclaim to her that her service is at an end. Her guilt is expiated. Indeed, she has received from the hand of the Lord double for all her sins. A voice cries out, In the desert, prepare the way of the Lord. Make straight in the wasteland a highway for our God. Every valley shall be filled in. Every mountain and hill shall be made low. The rugged land shall be made a plain. The rough country, a broad valley. Then the glory of the Lord shall be revealed. All of the people shall see it together, for the mouth of the Lord has spoken. Go up onto a high mountain, Zion, herald of glad tidings. Cry out at the top of your voice, Jerusalem, herald of good news. Fear not to cry out and say to the cities of Judah, here is your God. Here comes with power the Lord God, who rules by his strong arm. Here is his reward with him, his recompense before him. Like a shepherd, he feeds his flock. In his arms, he gathers his lambs, carrying them in his bosom and leading the ewes with care. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
Grant us your salvation, O God. Let us see your kindness, O Lord. Grant us your salvation, O God. second letter of St. Peter. Do not ignore this one fact, beloved, that with the Lord one day is like a thousand years, and a thousand years like one day. The Lord does not delay his promise, as some regard delay, but he is patient with you, not wishing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. But the day of the Lord will come like a thief, and then the heavens will pass away with a mighty roar, and the elements will be dissolved by a fire, and the earth and everything done on it will be found out. Since everything is to be dissolved in this way, what sort of persons ought you to be, conducting yourselves in holiness and devotion, waiting for and hastening the coming of the day of God? because of which the heavens will be dissolved in flames and the elements melted by fire. But according to his promise, we await new heavens and a new earth in which, in which righteousness dwells. Therefore, beloved, since you await these things, be eager to be found without spot or blemish before him at peace. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. 
Glory to you, Lord. The beginning of the gospel of Jesus Christ, the Son of God. As it is written in Isaiah the prophet, Behold, I am sending my messenger ahead of you. He will prepare your way. A voice of one crying out in the desert, Prepare the way of the Lord. Make straight his paths. John the Baptist appeared in the desert, proclaiming a baptism of repentance for the forgiveness of sins. People of all Judea, through the countryside, and all the inhabitants of Jerusalem were going out to him and were being baptized by him in the Jordan River as they acknowledged their sins. John was clothed in camel hair with a leather belt around his waist. He fed on locusts and wild honey, and this is what he proclaimed, One mightier than I is coming after me. I am not worthy the stoop and loosen the thongs of his sandals. I was baptized, I will baptize you with water. He will baptize you with the Holy Spirit. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. I love this wonderful image of the voice crying out in the desert, prepare the way of the Lord, make straight his paths. It always reminds me of the times that I am hiking, whether in upper Michigan or whether I'm in Colorado or even in Arizona. Those are a few of my favorite places to hike and I'm sure with many of you around the country, you have your favorite places to hike as well. But what I've always noticed, and even when I'm in Upper Michigan, is that there are people who go along and they trim the paths and they take good care of the paths that are going through the forest or even through the hilly country. And I know being in Colorado through the mountainous territory that there's someone that kind of keeps an eye on the paths. If a tree falls down, they bring a chainsaw and they cut between that tree to make sure that the path is open for all of those who are using that path. And I want you to get that image. That's a beautiful image of what we are celebrating today. And that is John is helping us to clear our path. And he calls us to a repentance of sin. And you know something, the desert, the desert is a barren wasteland to a degree. Yes, there is a growth out there, but it's a harsh place. But it really gets you and I in touch with what's going on inside of here. Because when there isn't a lot to focus on, then you need to focus on this inside here. So we are in our deserts. Or we're going to go through that path that John is preparing for us, but that path needs to be ready right in here to bring us to our Lord Jesus Christ at Christmas. And that path means, what are the obstacles? As I mentioned, sometimes trees fall down on that path. Sometimes the path can be washed out by water coming down, or even a strong wind that blows sand or something up into that path. Or maybe just the undergrowth growing over and now covering parts of the path. You see, we have to ask, what is that growth, that tree, that uh, wash out? that needs to be looked at in our own lives. And I called attention last weekend that we need to look at our attitude. What are, what's going on with our attitude? Whether it's towards family, your spouse, what needs to be adjusted there? Because sometimes, even in the midst of what we have been experiencing with the COVID virus, is that we have been locked up, cooped up, and sometimes tempers can run high. Sometimes we say things that we really shouldn't have said. Where is there forgiveness there? Where is I'm sorry? You see, that's where we have to incorporate those moments in which, you know, I recognize that I was a bit harsh or a bit strong or a bit angry or a bit uh, unreasonable with my partner or with a uh, co-worker or a family member or my child or whatever that may be. To really examine our attitudes and then to even move to behaviors. You know, are we reckless out on the roads, roads? Are we uh, honoring our bodies by taking good care without over caring for our bodies? I mean, it's one thing to care for our bodies. Are we eating very good foods and drinking plenty of water and really taking good care 
of our human bodies? Are we spending too much time or wasting too much time, whether it's you know you need to take care of something and we're just wasting the time away. We're not taking care of what needs to be taken care of. Or spending too much time on the internet. So do we have to look at the times that we're out on the internet and maybe wasting too much time out there or going into what I call the dark side of the internet. The internet can be wonderful. Man, I find all kinds of great information. I get more recipes out on that internet and all kinds of wonderful things, but I know that there's a dark side. And are we taken or uh, we wander, like last week's gospel said, we wander into these territories that we really know that we need to avoid. You see, John calls us to name those sins, to name those areas that need to change. And with his booming voice and his directness, that's sometimes what we need. Sometimes we don't really want to face ourselves, and that's why a lot of people don't want to go to confession. It's hard to go to confession. It's hard because we feel ashamed and we feel guilt and we don't feel good about ourselves because we know that we are better than some of the sins that we commit. And so I want you to be aware, what are the areas, what are the obstacles that get into our pathways that need to be cleared out so that we can have a straight path to Jesus? Because you know what? When we do have that path, and it is a good path, no matter where it is, and we can meet Jesus, that's what we want to do. By clearing up our attitude, by taking good care of ourselves, by also avoiding the dark side of certain things that cause us to sin. So uh, for your own reflection this week, I want you to spend a few moments to really name the obstacles that need to be cleared so that we too can make straight that path to our Lord Jesus. So having said that, let us now profess our faith. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, consubstantial with the Father, through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate to the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead, and the life of the world to come. Amen. Amen. With faith in our Lord Jesus, we present our needs. For the church, that we may make straight the Lord's paths, allowing his presence to permeate the lives of people around the world, especially those desperate for comfort and hope. We pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our prayer. prayer. For those struggling to make their way out of rugged lands and tough countries, immigrants, refugees, and those seeking asylum, that they may find the strength and confidence in their faith as Isaiah and the exiles did from Jerusalem centuries ago. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For world leaders, that they may listen to the voices crying out in the desert, the voices of those who hunger and thirst for sustenance, justice, and peace. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That during this season of holy expectation, we may prepare our hearts to receive Christ now, at Christmas, and at any time. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those battling to escape wastelands of addiction, 
despair, or depression, that they may know God's comfort and forgiveness. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the prayers we hold in the silence of our hearts. For all of these, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And for today's Mass intention, Jerry and Evelyn Burchinski. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And for today's Mass intention, Greg Burchinski. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Loving God, let us make straight that path. Let us heed the words of John the Baptist and put them into good practice as we continue our celebration of Advent and we lift these prayers in your name and we ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. my brothers and sisters, that my offering and yours will be acceptable to God the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept this sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of God's name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. Be pleased, O Lord, with our humble prayers and offerings, and since we have no merit to plead our cause, come, we pray, to our rescue with the protection of your mercy through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For he assumed at his first coming the lowliness of human flesh, and so fulfilled the design that you formed long ago and open for us the way to eternal salvation, that when he comes again in glory and majesty and all is at last made manifest, we who watch for that day may inherit the great promise in which now we dare to hope. And so with the angels and the archangels, we sing the hymn of your glory as without end we acclaim. holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and the blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time that he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it, and he gave it to his disciples, and he said, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you.
In a similar way, when the supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave the chalice to his disciples, and he said, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and the blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity together with Francis, our Pope, Jerome, our Archbishop, Richard, Jeffrey James, our auxiliary bishops, all the clergy, and all of you, God's holy people. And we remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection. <coughs> and all who have died in your mercy, welcome them into the light of your face and have mercy on us all, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, the Mother of God, Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life, and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. And so we gather our hearts this day as we pray together, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil, and graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may always be free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to all of your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance to your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with all of you. And with your spirit. So let us now turn to one another and offer each other a spiritual sign of peace. Peace be with you.
Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. May the body and the blood of our Lord Jesus Christ bring us to life everlasting. Amen. And let us pray. Resplendent by the food of spiritual nourishment, we humbly beseech you, O Lord, that through the partaking of this mystery, you may teach us to judge wisely the things of earth and hold firm to the things of heaven. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. So we turn to the Blessed Mother and we pray for her intercession as we pray. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Our Lady of Chestahova, pray for us. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. This Mass is ended. Go forth in peace and love to serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. Have a great day, everybody. You too, Father. Seed to know.